nice kitty right there. Oh, and the chat is already firing off really early. Uh, although, I mean, early. I started late. So, I mean, is that early or just on time? I, um, I don't know how that works. I am not a doctor. Um, we'll, we'll take the camera down in a minute. I'm sure everyone's curious as to the Humpty Dumpty situation, which uh, now that I've explained to people that he has been named and gendered by my audience and I am second fiddle on my own show, uh, not depressing at all. Um, <laughs> my therapist is upping my medication. <laughs> Hot Jesus mother. And that would be Wilmer Auto Tech. Thank you for the 50 bits, sir. Oh, man. Oh, God. That one. I wasn't ready for that one. Okay. Anyways. Uh, should we just, should we just draw back the curtain? I suppose there's not really a whole big point in waiting. Uh, bam, everybody. There you go. Uh, the chair has returned. I am once again in my cone of shame or shell of shame. I don't know. Womb of shame. Womb. It's a very serious word. Oh. Because as I continue to reiterate into people, this is comfy. It's very easy to be like, all right, I'm just going to just going to take a second here. Just let the world slow down. And then, you know, next thing you know, it's 20 minutes later. The egg is back. Yes, Toastmaster, the egg has returned. Um, now with a flushing option and, and a direct line to the plumbing so I can just shit in it all willy-nilly. There we go. And the buoy to round it out. Thank you very much, Wilmer Auto Tech, for the 100 bits. <laughs> Dear Butch with a flush. That's now the thing, too. Somebody asked me the other day, or was it? Oh. oh, mother, I just kicked my foot forward, and it landed on my ottoman really hard. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was not, that was not family friendly. Oh, oh, fuck me, mother. Oh. It's going to be an interesting doctor's appointment tomorrow because, uh, you know, I got to go in for the MS thing. They're going to be like, do you fall? And I got to be like, yeah, constantly. It's uh, never forget to flush, says Dear Butch. I mean, yeah, if you're polite, dude, never, never, ever forget to flush. What are you, a sicko? What are you, a serial killer? A psychopath? Not only do I not flush, I make sure to go in the upper and lower deck. I call it the shit storm. It starts out bad and proceeds to get worse. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Well, the government, don't worry. He has left his skid mark, my friends. <laughs> Anyways, as I was saying, uh, New York is to scrap the uh, inmate term in favor of an incarcerated individual into state law. Uh, New York State will no longer refer to prisoners as inmates and will instead call them incarcerated individuals, according to a new law. Democratic New York Governor Kathy Hochul signed the legislation Monday. She argues that removing the term inmate will help to reduce harmful stigma against incarcerated people by correcting outdated terminology. <laughs> Yeah, man, I, I mean, I murdered somebody, but I really don't like that they call me an inmate. <laughs> I mean, was I high on drugs at the time? Yeah. Did I kind of, you know, 
hit a car, killing a mother and her two children, sort of. But I mean, do we have to call me an inmate? It's so mean. <laughs> and on that Plus, note, let's watch an innocent man discover a touch screen. Now kind of hung up just a little bit. Oh, I moved the map. I didn't know I, I could do that. No way. Are you serious? Did you just discover you gotta, that? I got to try it. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Can you believe that? Just touch it. You can oh, go anywhere you want. That's so cool. <laughs> I didn't know. Can I zoom? It's oh. like magic. Oh, 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 man. It's a great day. It's a great day. Uh, it's a beautiful start this morning. Our temperatures are, are warming up nicely this afternoon, but we're still good. I didn't, I just, I've like, never, seriously. I've yeah. never touched it before. Oh, my oh, gosh, my. you can tilt it? What's going on here? All right, anyway, I'm going to figure this all out. A beautiful day in the next couple of days. Oh, man. I got to figure out how to get this picture on my phone so I can send it to April. There's a mouth only a mother can love. <laughs> Fanatical Bucks fan. Creepy. You think other sharks make fun of them? Hey, nurse, where are you? Where are your teeth? Come over here and give me a gummer. Oh. <laughs> Do you think other sharks make fun of nurse sharks? Because if they would have went to school for two more years, they could have been a doctor shark. <laughs> Joe Berger liking Fanatical Bucks fan line. Um, Chevrolet JB saying, looks like something you would see on r slash don't put your dick in it. Yeah, I think that is. Definitely. That is a penis. That is a uh, a pencil sharpener for a penis. Uh, you just want to wear that thing down to a pointy nub. There you go. Um, <laughs> they only make fun of the male nurse sharks. Well, that's because they're trying to fuck the female nurse sharks because everyone assumes they're whores. Oh, Jesus. Nurse sharks. So, yes, that is a nurse shark attack. Nurse or nerf? Nurse or nerf? Because I almost said nerf shark attack now. Now I just want to be like, it's nurse or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, nurse shark. Thank you, Atomic Citizen. All righty. So and this has a video, so we're going to try this video on, on it. A bear got trapped in a Montana couple's car for nearly eight hours. Now, here's my question. If a bear shits in your car, but the windows are up, can you hear it? <laughs> this is apparently an ad that we have to watch first. Oh, a stupid roofing ad. It's not too rare to see a bear when you're near Red Lodge, but what is uncommon is for a bear to open your car door and climb into it. But that happened to one couple Monday night. Well, it was there from about 11. A little after Holy 11 Jesus. At night till almost seven o'clock in the morning. After eight straight hours in a car, even the best of us get a little cranky, so it shouldn't be a huge shock. Every once in a while you'd hear a crunch that the passenger who ended up in the Pilates vehicle Monday night was more than eager to get out. I thought maybe. Oh, that's some bear shit. That is some bear shit right there. That bear shit in a driver's seat. <laughs> Toastmaster, I bet it's a Subaru. Angry Saxon, nurse shark, do 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 nurse shark, do 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 uh. Nurse Shark looks like Grandma Shark. Nurse Shark looks like she has Grandma Shark's mouth, I'm going to say. <laughs> the bear could smell the menstruation that she had in the car. 
This is why you don't get fabric seats, all right? I don't mean to speak. I Look, look now, I don't want to speak out of turn here, okay? But my wife, she was a uh, house out, we say. She was on... She was on her, 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 how, how shall we call vacation week? All right. <laughs> it's vacation week because we throw whatever she wants at her to get her to shut up. She, uh, she's cranky. She got some horrible, horrible menstrual shits. And quite frankly, we went to Red Lobster, didn't realize Cheddar Bay Biscuits made the bitch queef. All right. <laughs> She peppered that passenger seat with some, with what I shall call some, some pussy perfume to no avail. I was gagging the whole way home. And then, uh, and, and then, uh, you know, we had, uh, we had ourselves a good night hoping that'd be the end of it. God damn. If a bear didn't lock himself in the car. <laughs> Fanatical Bucks fan just going in on the cheddar. Baby. Damn. Those are good biscuits. throw a rag in the gas hole i mean angry saxon that seems really really like illegal um i mean i i'm certainly not opening the door for the bear but i get what you're saying who did open the door for the bear anyways too bad the guy, the bear's in there for eight hours. He didn't bother getting any footage of that. We got plenty of footage of the aftermath. You didn't want to go up and, uh, uh, I tell you right now, I can barely see what happened. <laughs> Damn raccoon. <laughs> Honestly, there's barely any damage. Um, Next story, you could get paid to eat candy as a Canadian company's chief candy officer. So for those of you hoping to die of diabetes, we have found your avenue. Fuck being a streamer. You can get paid to eat fucking candy? I mean, yeah, it's in Canada. There are some sacrifices I'm going to have to make, but I don't know, man. Maybe I'll do it. I'm just saying. It's always good to have a backup plan. Um, turns out you might be able to eat candy for a living and make thousands in the process. Uh, define thousands. Canada's Candy Funhouse is hiring a chief candy officer, according to a recent job posting, do you love all things candy and chocolate? Are you passionate about confectionery treats and exploring unreleased and existing products? If so, this is the perfect position for you. The description reads on LinkedIn. Yeah, but I wonder, does that place have a uh, a uh, utility elevator for its main entrance? I'm guessing <laughs> some of the people that will be applying for this job may be biggins. The Ontario-based company said the position pays 100000 Canadian dollars. That's like 50 bucks American. <laughs> Kidding. That's uh, $78,167.70 U.S. annually. Eh, so that's all right. The job can be remote or based in its Canada or New Jersey offices. Hey, but you could move to Jersey. <laughs> huh? The chief, chan the chief candy officer will serve as head taste tester and try over 35,000 products each month. Besides eating about 113 pieces of candy a day, the chief candy officer will lead the company's Funhouse Candy Strategy, a run candy, board, run candy board meetings, and have a say in which products Candy Funhouse will carry. Sweet Jesus, man. The chief candy officer will also approve candy inventory and designate spotlight treats with an official stamp of approval. Uh, thank you, Dear Butch, for the Bite Me sticker, and uh, I believe that was 100 bits. Thank you. Thank you very much. Applicants can be as young as five years old and must reside in North America. 
That part scares me. So wait a minute. If my daughter was a year older, she could make more money than me. <laughs> All you need is a passion for candy, pop culture, and a sweet tooth part of the job, ad reads. Oh my God, guaranteed to diabetes. Yes, yes it is. The chief candy officer will also undergo extensive surgery. No, I'm just kidding. Extensive palate training, according to the job description. So far, nearly 65,000 people have applied to the job on LinkedIn. Inquiries on the job are so high, the company said its usual response time is delayed. Applicants have until August 31st to apply. No previous experience necessary. I mean, define previous experience. I don't uh, I don't mean to brag but I've uh I've gotten my hands on a butterfinger once in a while. I've been known to kit the cat if you know what I mean. <laughs> Angry Saxon I feel like must be 400 pounds to apply would be a short-term employee. That guy's going to get diabetes quick. I feel like must be 100 pounds to apply, will be 400 pounds upon time of death or retirement. But the five-year-old thing, who are you looking to get for this? What, you want someone to be your spokesperson? What, your literal baby Ruth? <laughs> Uh, Johnny, how can you kick the cat? I thought your legs don't work. <laughs> nah, dude, I was talking about, uh, you know, the, the kick cat, the, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, whatchamacallit. It's, um, it's not a Charleston chew. Uh, it's a candy bar. There you go. You can only get them on Fifth Avenue. Um, but they cost a hundred grand. <laughs> yep, I think I'm done with that one now. Uh, I think I might just do a highlight reel. We're going to do the candy story bard at the end there just for that for me. Fuck off. Oh, wow. No, we're not done yet. The The position would no doubt involve excessive consumption of sugar, which the World Health Organization recommends limiting to 10% of one's daily calories. Too much sugar could increase the risk of type 2 diabetes and heart disease. No shit. The job posting specifies that the position comes with an extensive dental plan. Yeah, but you might want to include a treadmill. But if you try one, you'll say, oh, Henry. <laughs> Thank you, Toastmaster. That was hilarious. Lab Glass Projects could use a bit, oh, honey. Fuck off. K. Fallen continuing to tell us to say fuck off. No, my voice is cracking relentlessly, and I will continue to do this. All right? This jawbreaker of a bit will not end. Oh, free dentures. Yeah, you know. Free dentures, so that way you continue eating the gummy worms. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Fuck off. I mean, this job could be a lot, but I, I, I don't know. Does it pay enough? Because I feel like 78000 is not the right answer to what would you do for, for a Klondike bar. <laughs> Lab Glass asking, what's your favorite galaxy? 
No idea. Anyone that has a starburst? I'm betting you're a fan of the Milky Way. (laughs) These halls are all squishy. So now I have no choice but to eat them. It's weird. I've never been to Mars, but from what I've tasted, it's rather nougaty. <laughs> if you accept this job, you have to become one of the three musketeers. Shamrock 140, I can see Uranus from here. Don't worry, this is going to make it into the episode highlight that we're going to cut together at the end. Just start recording them, cutting a highlight, and then deleting the recording because it's going to be on there anyway. Um, <laughs> it's four forty. Fuck off. Maybe, maybe I should. Oh, <laughs> I think I'm out of candy bars. <laughs> But not gas. <laughs> Cave Allen in Balls Deep, Angry Saxon, you guys, thank you so much for the channel point uh, interaction. Again, feel free to use those. That's why they're there. I don't want it always to be about money. Like I said earlier, our goal is pretty close to being hit, so we're not going to fucking bust anyone's balls. There's one I just can't remember. Whatchamacallit. Yeah, its name escapes me too, man. You mean the York Peppermint Patty? (laughs) Real talk between you, me, and everybody that's listening, whichever government agency, I'll fucking kill a motherfucker for a good York Peppermint Patty. Lab glass, that made me snicker. Ha! I give you zero bars, no points. Oh. Oh. That's rough, man. Now I just have to sit back here and, like, Charleston chew the fat with you guys. (laughs) And hope that there's, like, some way... That I can all uh, that I can dig my way out of this mound and get to some sort of sense of almond joy. <laughs> I don't know. I think that horse is dead. Is it? Is it dead yet, or can we hit it a few more times? Um. It could be now or it could be late. Oh, it could be now or later. I get it. <laughs> okay, Fallen, I'm out of points. I hit the payday down on Fifth Avenue. Someone dropped their candy. What a butterfinger. <laughs> now we're just recycling them. It brought me Fuck such off. almond joy. Yeah, but you're mixing them all together. Okay, so we're just uh, throwing it all in there. Angry Saxon uh, now saying "fuck off." Apparently, apparently, uh, we love to hate this bit. I don't know. It's uh, uh, some of you guys are just not Jolly Ranchers right now. I gotta say. <laughs> Thank you for the 50 bits, dear Butch. Hey, laser lips. Your mama was a snowblower. Yeah, and she did it back when candy bars cost a nickel. (laughs) Fuck off. K-Fall saying, if I don't get this job, Tootsies will roll. (laughs) Johnny Chimpo got mounds of points. (laughs) (laughs) 
look, the job's great, but you got to work for a couple of women who are, and I don't mean to, to, to cast them in a negative light here. These two broads are a real couple of mounds, all right? Uh, baby Ruth uh, could always score. <laughs> yes, you better roll out of here. Fuck off. We be kicking the dead, whatchamacallit, with a thingamajig. Yes, uh, yes, we do. But I mean, I. What am I? What else am I gonna do? Listen to Eminem. <laughs> oh Jesus! I don't think this bit is uh, funny anymore. It just. Uh... Johnny Chimple. All right, let's take five. <laughs> Proving me wrong. Johnny Chimple pulled me right back in when I thought we had no more Laffy Taffy. <laughs> oh. Thank you, dear Butch, for the door knocker and the 25 uh, bits. We need a breakfast. We need a breakfast. Well, what 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 could we do for a breakfast? Is there something we can do about that? I, what do you mean we need a breakfast? I I don't get it. Like a granola bar. <laughs> oh God, a fast break. Oh. Oh, okay. A fast br a break. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I uh I'm sorry when when you when it auto corrects and I'm sure that was an auto correct thing or whatever, just the way that that came out, it was hard for me to figure out what you meant us. Whatever, I'm dyslexic. It's all right, man. Stuff happens, dude. You don't got to be a nerd about it. Jeez. You make one mistake, and it's like you get on the sour patch of these kids. Better take two. No, fuck you, my ass is chapped now. I don't know. That was a milk dud. I don't know. This bit seems to be going pretty good. <laughs> but then again, I'm the host of the show. You'd think uh, I, I would have more of a caramello to give. <laughs> Go and shack that Laffy Tacky. Laffy Tacky. I want a, a Chico stick. I want a Dana because you so thick. One Dana Coos. Okay. Call me Michaela saying F8. I'm actually going to download the whole episode and just uh, kind of do a highlights reel thing, I think. We'll put up a highlights reel of each episode uh, as our regular daily contribution to the YouTube channel. Um, the jokes have been good and plenty. <laughs> I think they've been candy corny. <laughs> but I mean, I saw a couple old friends, Mike and Ike. How are they doing? How are they doing? <laughs> Heard they had to go switch into a new job. Now they're just making peanuts. I was trying to do lyrics to Laffy Taffy. Oh, I'm sorry. Johnny's broken crutch. I got Duke High with dog treats from the tobacco shop. Wow, dear Butch, that's not a good thing to admit. 
Uh, you're not you when you're hungry. This whole bit's because I need a Snickers. Um, <laughs> he's confused. Yeah. Yeah, dear Butch. Spoiler alert. You drug your dog. He's fucking confused. I was going to go for a run, but I heard uh, a crunch in my knee. Oh, no. no. I have one story we can squeeze into the last 10 minutes, but I have a feeling like there are a few goobers in here. Yeah, I feel like this fucking candy bit's going to go for the rest of the show. <laughs>